Hello and welcome to HTML, where we talk about HTML and HTML only. My name is Manuel and in this very first episode, I want to discuss a layout I found online, or actually I want to discuss the implementation of that layout. What you can see on the screen right now is a typical two column layout. There is a left column, it's narrow, it contains the logo of the page and the navigation and the right column fills the rest of the screen and it contains a heading and some paragraphs. Now I saw this layout on a website and when I looked at the code I found this. There is a parents section element and for the left column they're using the aside element. Within that aside element is a div and another section. In that section is a header that contains the logo and there is a main element with some links for the navigation and the footer and for the right column they pick the section element, a footer, a main element and another footer. Now there are many things wrong with this implementation but what especially caught my attention was that they were using the aside element for the left column. Personally, I wouldn't use the aside element here and I will explain why in a moment. Before I do that, I want to quickly try to replicate their decision-making process. So here's what I believe uh, happened. They were looking at the design and they said, okay, um, there is a right column. This is the main section of the page. This is easy. And the left column, it's a bar. It's on the side. It's a sidebar. Wait a minute. There's an element in HTML that you use for sidebars, the aside element. And if we look at the specification, it says the following. The aside element represents a section of a page that consists of content that is tangentially, what a word, even worse than squirrel, tangentially related to the content around the aside element and which could be considered separate from that content. Such sections are often represented as sidebars in printed typography. The element can be used for typo typographical the element can be used for typographical effects like pull quotes or sidebars, for advertising, for groups of nav elements, and for other content that is considered separate from the main content of the page. So it says sidebar twice and it even mentions uh, nav elements, navigational elements. I understand that this can be confusing, but the logo of the site and also the main navigation are not just tangentially related to the content and they're also not considered separate from the main content of the page. They introduce the user to the page and they provide means to uh, navigate on that site, primary navigation. That's important stuff and if we have important uh, introductory and important navigational content, we put that in the header element usually. Content in the aside element only supports the main content. So the main content will work without the content in the aside element and the whole page will work without that. Let's take a look at the dev community website. It has three columns. The first column contains the main navigation, the second column, the main content, and the right, right column, some aside elements that are related to the main content. If we remove the third column, the page still works, the site still works. We understand where we are on the page, we can navigate, and we can still consume the main content. So if you ask me, this is how I would structure the left column in this layout. Just a header element, a linked image. The alt attribute of the image is homepage. So it doesn't describe what's in the image, but the purpose of the link, because the alt attribute here serves as the content for the link. And I put the navigation in a nav element and in a list, an unordered list, and each link is in a list item. The visual representation of a website or a component shouldn't influence you too much in terms of picking the right marker for your page. The semantic meaning, meaning of the elements should. That's why I try to extract the content from the design when I look at the, at the design. So I try to blank out the, the design when I try to come up with the right markup. So what happens in my head is a little bit something like that. So first I look at the design. I try to get an impression of how it's structured, how things are related, what the purpose of each element is. And then I blank out the styling. And what I'm left with is 
a layout with unstyled content. So just the content, the basic content. And then I try to blank out the layout as well. And then I'm left with a single column with unstyled content. And if you look at that now, does it make sense to wrap the logo and the navigation in an aside element? No. It makes more sense to wrap it in a header element. And that's what I do with every design that I have to build. If this is too hard for you in, in the beginning to, to imagine how the site looks like without the, the styling, then just take pen and paper and sketch out the, the content of the page and uh, scribble some information to each piece of the content. So add, try to, to, to come up with uh, the right element for each piece of the page, write it down and then write down the HTML. And if you need some divs uh, later on for styling, you just add them later on. That's it for the first episode. That's what I wanted to share with you. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you were able to learn something new. Uh, if you have to say anything, if you have some kind of feedback or questions, please leave a comment uh, on YouTube in the comment section, or you can also find me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is mmatuzo, that's double M-A-T-U-Z-O, or you can also find me at htm underscore hell. Thanks so much for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.